Hello everyone. Today I'd like to discuss some things I'd personally like to see changed in Ready or Not before its release from the perspective of an officer. Some of these things are bug fixes which can be fixed pretty easily. Others are suggestions that require intensive mechanics changes which I don't expect to happen but hey, you never know. First and foremost, since it's on the main menu, the Serpas. If you don't know what Serpas are or why everyone abhors them, let me explain it in like 10 seconds. I just f***ing shot myself! Oh, son of a bitch, I just shot my- Yeah, so, uh, no thanks. Let's use something like Safari Land holsters, which I and a majority of officers across the country use for their duty carry. I know it doesn't change much of anything mechanically for the gang, but if we're being realistic, Safari Land is more accurate to what most officers use. Next up are two things I've already addressed in the update video, but I want to reiterate it. First being the anti-stab vests. I'm all for having anti-stab vests, in fact I think it's a very interesting concept. That being said, I would like to see soft body armor put in place that can stop lower caliber rounds, mimicking a patrol officer response, not just an anti-stab vest that has no ballistic protection. Second being the NVGs. NVGs can be worn in conjunction with gas masks and ballistic mandibles, allowing for the player to equip NVGs along with other helmet items. Allowing for the player to have both is accurate to real life setups, so to not have it in the game would be a really big miss in my opinion. Also, there's a little bug here with the comms. Something I'd like to propose is to have save loadouts in the game. Having save loadouts would speed up the loadout change process immensely. I'd love to see this work for the player, as well as for the AI, to change the dynamics of the game with one to two clicks rather than a whole buttload. This whole clip was sped up about 400%, by the way. Uh, looks like this guy has two radios. I'm not sure if this is a bug or intentional, but it seems two radios is a bit overkill for one operator, especially since most radios have a scan function, which allows you to listen to several channels at once. Is that being nitpicky? Absolutely. Also, side note here, please bring back nine bangs. I'll never forget you, baby. So the pepper spray in this game is pretty solid, but in cases where it's splashing back this much, the user should be getting the effects of pepper spray as well. Alright, so there's a few issues here with the taser. First, the taser is meant for incapacitation of the muscles. The fact that these guys are just slightly peeved at the fact they're getting tased, while well, hilarious, isn't all that realistic, with the exception of this guy. I just said, You're gonna get tased if you don't sit down. You. I'll get you. If a suspect is tased, they should fall over or at least go to the ground. Having first-hand experience with this, I can tell you for a fact, there's no other place to go but the ground when you get tased. Also, tasers should be able to re-tase so long as the cables are still attached to the suspect, which is a bit of an issue since the cables disappear after a period of time. And finally, I'd like to see tasers placed into a gadget category, as I've never seen an officer give up their secondary just to have a taser in real life. Yeah, <laughs> missing a few textures here. Okay, so this is something that the AI doesn't always do particularly well. That being stacking up on the doors. The stack tends to either split when it doesn't need to, and single stack when it does. Also, the AI tends to take the worst spots possible. Like this for instance. These guys don't need to split stack for this door. There's ample room to the right. That being said, even if they are going to split stack, this guy should be standing dead in front of the doorway. He should be behind cover. This light on 213 has been an issue for a bit. As you can see, I'm walking back and forward here and the light itself turns on and off. This might be an engine issue, so either an easy fix or a hard one. Either way, it's funny nonetheless. So one more issue I have with the AI is that sometimes they'll overpenetrate, like super far. I mean, look at this guy. We went from downstairs to him by himself all the way upstairs and three rooms over. I am all for the AI being productive, but this is a step too far. Dominating and clearing a room is perfect, but taking a room and then taking several more by yourself is not a safe way to go, and the AI should replicate that. Another little small bug here, feet on the stairways clip through rather than adapting to the stairs. And from what little I understand about game making, that's actually a decently difficult thing to overcome, so I don't expect to fix that anytime soon. So to finish off this little tirade, I'd like to suggest one more thing. Something I'd like to see implemented is surrender commands in that people who have surrendered can be ordered to knee crawl towards the player out of harm's way. 
This allows for the player to detain suspects in a spot they know is safe, rather than having to enter into an unknown room or hallway just to throw handcuffs on someone. I know all of these are seemingly small and nitpicky, but as per usual, I want to give the developers feedback since it's all still a work in progress. And none of it is to take away from how awesome of a game it already is and how excited I am to see the game get a full release sometime soon. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching, I really do appreciate it, and as always, remember our sole objectives. Stop the killing, stop the dying. I'll see y'all later.